So now let's go into the word and try to understand what exactly is this mark of the beast. So we are going to look at Exodus 13 from verse 14 to 16. So it shall be when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is this that you shall say to him by strength of hand? The Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall be as a sign to your hand and as frontlets between your eyes. For by strength of the hand of God brought us out of Egypt. That's Exodus 13, verse 14 to 16. But let's emphasize verse 16. It shall be as a sign to your hand and as a frontlet between your eyes. For by strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. Do you see this? This is the mark of the Lord. And this is what the enemy is trying to copy. The Lord said that this mark will be upon his people as a remembrance to what he had done. And then in Ezekiel 9 verse 4, this is what the Lord said. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the forehead of the man who sighs and cries over all the abomination that are done within it. And in verse 6, Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. That's Ezekiel 9 verse 4 and Ezekiel 9 verse 6. There is a mark of the Lord. In Galatians 6 17, it says this, From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus. In Revelation 14 verse 9, it says this, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand then it goes on to tell you what the consequence of that is that's revelation 14 verse 9 there is a mark of the lord so the enemy is attempting to copy that by marking his people the mark is firstly spiritual as we have seen both in the time of the wandering in the desert when the lord told the people that there should be a mark a sign on their hand and the front leg between their eyes. This is a spiritual thing. That's Exodus 13, if you remember, 14 to 16. And then in Ezekiel 9, the angel was told to go through all of the city and mark all those men that sigh and cry over all the abomination that were done within the city. But there were people who were marked for God. This is what the enemy wants to take revenge on in Revelation 13. He wants to take revenge on the fact that his servants were marked and marked for destruction. Okay. So we see in Revelation 20, verse 4, it says, And I saw thrones, and them that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yeshua and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark in their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And again, we see in Revelation 22, verse 4, They shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So we see clearly, this is the reason why we need to have that wisdom and understanding, because everyone is rushing to count numbers and to talk about 666 and other things to do with the mark of the beast, but no one ever speaks about the mark of God. And we can clearly see in scripture that this is what this really is about. The enemy wants to take revenge on God's people and create his own system because he suffered the defeat which we saw in Ezekiel and all the places where the messenger was told to go through the city and to slay everyone who had the mark of the enemy but spare everyone who had the mark of God. Ezekiel 9, 4, Ezekiel 6. It's worth reading the whole of the chapter. So really what we should be concentrating our thoughts and our minds on is the mark of God. So we see that in Revelation 20, verse 4, as we read before, they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. We can also look at Revelation 7, verse 3, which says, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Revelation 7, 3. Also in Revelation 14, verse 1, reads, then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 
144,000 have in his father's name written in their foreheads. Revelation 14, 1. So we see very clearly what we're actually talking about is the mark of God. And in fact, it's evident from scriptures that those that belong to God are already marked. Yeshua said that when he appears, he will send out his angels to gather his people from the four corners of the earth. They are already marked. The angels will be looking for those that are marked. The enemy wants to take revenge and wants to mark certain people and have certain people worship. But we as children of God need to focus our minds on the mark of God and to ensure that we are marked for God and then to start to unravel the mystery of these teachings and these visions and these scriptures. Not to listen to commentators, not to listen to writers of books and all these things, but to do what the scripture says. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. But then it goes on to explain that this wisdom and this understanding comes from above. This is the spirit of the living God. In the revelation of Yeshua, we see that there are seven spirits around the throne. And then in Isaiah, we can clearly see the breakdown of those seven spirits. We can clearly see what they are. So just to refresh our memories, in Isaiah 11, it says, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, one. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, two and three. The spirit of counsel and might, four and five. The spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, six and seven. But the ones that we are interested in, in this teaching, is the spirit of wisdom and understanding, which we should seek to receive before we try to break down what the scripture is telling us. It is an individual affair. It is all about a relationship with the living God. If we do not have that relationship with the living God, we will be in trouble because we won't be able to interpret what the word is saying because we will only be able to do it through his spirit. We can't do it through what others say because they don't know under any circumstances. So don't follow it, don't listen to it, close your ear from it. If you remember Yeshua's teaching when he was saying that many will come to him in the last day, in the end times, when he returns, and they will say to him, this is from Matthew 7, verse 22 to 24. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name and done many wondrous things in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you that work iniquity matthew 7 22 to 24. so what is that about here you see that they are calling him lord lord so they are in the right position they are servants and they have prophesied in his name they have cast out demons in his name they have done many wonders in his name but they're approaching him on the basis of their works and the things they have done and what's the issue he's saying i never knew you it's a relationship where is the relationship that's what this is about so i am encouraging you to understand that to have wisdom and understanding depends on you having that relationship to have an interpretation of the scriptures and to understand in the spirit what the scriptures are saying to you at any time is to have that relationship with the king of kings this is important so do not go by everything that is out there and every interpretation that's out there because unless you personally have that relationship yourselves you will not receive amen so what is it about it's not about what you know it's not about what the works that you've procured in your lifetime it's the fact that you either have that relationship with him or you don't have that relationship with him and born out of the relationship with him through the holy spirit you will gain the knowledge through the wisdom to hear and interpret what the scripture is saying at any one time because it is the living word it's not cookie cutter word that can be applied here and there willy-nilly but it is the living word so if we remember in the book of acts when peter got up and spoke he said this is that which was spoken of by the prophet joel it's a living word you can declare it now so the mysteries that are hidden in the revelation of jesus christ are mysteries and when the moment come the holy spirit will say to you this is that word being revealed now so let us not fool ourselves or waste our time talking foolishness about 666 and other things when we don't have the wisdom or the understanding from god to really go deep into what the scripture is saying first let us seek the wisdom and the understanding if any person who is journeying with me along this wants to truly know and understand i would suggest spend up to six months in prayer and fasting over the issue and then really apply yourself and speak to the lord and then ask him to start to show you and open to you in your spirit 
what he is saying through the word to you at this moment because it is a living word. Don't go buying books about this. Don't go watching people's teaching on this because unless they have received the wisdom and the understanding, they cannot lead you anywhere, okay? There is one last scripture. Yeshua said in John's gospel, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will teach you all truth and bring to remembrance all that I've taught you. And there is another scripture that emphasizes this point, which says, 1 John 2, 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Our greatest need in this time, as always, is to allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, we will grow richly in the word and we will not fall into error because the word is true and the word is established in heaven forever. Romans 8.14 tells us very clearly, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Romans 8 verse 14. So brothers and sisters, I commend this to you. Remember, what we're speaking about here is having that one-to-one -one relationship with Yeshua so that we can hear very clearly what the Spirit is telling us and so that we can seek to receive the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, and then be led by the Spirit into the interpretation of the Word because these are deep mysteries and visions and people are led away by speaking about 666 and all these things, not understanding anything of what the Scriptures are saying. The enemy is trying to emulate what God did by marking his people. The mark is spiritual, always has been, always will be, right to the very end, as we see in the book of the Revelation of Yeshua. So, the enemy is bringing about something that will rival that. It is spiritual in its nature. It will have a physical component, obviously, but that is not the real point. The point is not the physical nature of it. The point is, are we being led by the Spirit to understand what is the revelation of the Word of God to us personally for our time? I believe that this church age is the Laodicean church. And if you read about that message to the church that Yeshua sent by the angel in Revelation 3, you will see that the church thought it knew many things. They say, according to Yeshua, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I think that is speaking directly to this age. And then he said in verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. He then says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Now here is a verse that is so important for us to understand. Remember I said it's an individual affair. The corporate body was not hearing what Yeshua was speaking to them. So he then says this in verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20. I would suggest that you do a study of the whole of that section about the lukewarm church, which I believe is the end time church. But as you see from verse 20, it has to come down to an individual affair. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears, not if the church hears, if any individual person hears my voice and opens the door, that's where the relationship starts. And so before we can begin to think that we are going to know what these things mean, we need to have that relationship first. So bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand this and I hope you have gained from this. I hope you have received a great deal from this teaching. So let me just pray for you now. Abba Father, I thank you for this opportunity to delve deeply into the Word of God, to allow the Scriptures to interpret Scriptures. I bless each and every person that's been on this short journey, and I pray that they will have the opening to go and search diligently, as we have been taught to do in the Scriptures, so that our hearts, our souls can be fed with the precious eternal Word of God, which is strength and power, and that each and every person will grow in the full stature and the full maturity into sons and daughters of God, which the whole world is groaning, waiting for. And so I bless sons and daughters in Yeshua's precious and holy name. Amen.